Thank you. This paper is intended as a brief survey of the concept of the musical work in libraries and their catalogs, of the library practices that have evolved around it in the past, and also of current innovations enabled by web technology and encouraged by the definition of a work in the new data models used in cataloging. It is hoped that it will provide a useful background to the content of the other papers to be given here. First, what is a work? Both music librarians and music scholars have the task of describing the products of musical endeavor. The idea of a musical work is shared by both communities. However, this idea is inherited from a 19th century uh, understanding of works, which conceived them as, in Lydia Gore's words, complete and discrete, original and fixed units. This understanding is now being challenged as its limitations are recognized. The work-based approach breaks down when it comes to non-autonomous, functional, or improvisatory music whose identity is not fixed. For postmodernist criticism, the primary reality of music is in the listener's experience rather than in the work's inherent structure. This experience is not represented in libraries and library catalogs. Even with a more traditional approach to musical forms, we are presented with difficulties. How should we describe music that, operating in certain contexts like church and theater, was performed in different versions on different occasions? Are we obliged to pick one version arbitrarily as the authoritative one? Further, the idea of canon, the set of masterworks of Western art music, is also now being reassessed because of various biased assumptions on which it was based. Is there a risk that the separate recording of work level information will narrow the understanding of music and perpetuate existing biases? Is even the common or uniform title widely used by music catalogers an unacceptably absolute statement to musicologists for whom a work is a more fluid or perhaps even discredited concept? There are good reasons, however, for introducing work level recording. It will assist us to address a problem that causes confusion and duplication. Catalog records, whether for manuscripts or printed books, have always been ambiguous as to what they are describing, a source, or the intellectual <coughs> content of that source. One of the aims of the Cataloging Standard RDA, Resource Description and Access, is to remove this ambiguity and clarify the relationships between works and sources, as well as relationships with creators, time spans, places, and subjects. The RISM display begins to separate information about creative activity from information about the production and dissemination of sources. The development of the uniform title was itself an attempt to solve this problem of ambiguity. As early as 1841, Antonio Panizzi's cataloging rules suggest bringing together varying titles for the Bible and its parts by applying the general heading Bible before the title proper. American catalogers began adopting this principle for music in the second quarter of the 20th century using what were called bracketed titles or common titles to ensure that different editions of the same work appeared together in alphabetical sequence. They were artificial, pragmatic constructions. They served a purpose. RDA provides a continuum between this historic best practice and new ways to think of, record, and manipulate information about intellectual content. RDA is based on four bibliographic entities defined by Ferber, functional requirements for bibliographic data, and they are work, expression, manifestation, and item. A work in this model is defined as a distinct intellectual or artistic creation. The nature of a work is abstract and intangible. It cannot be examined or apprehended through individual realizations or expressions. It is based on a commonality of content among various expressions. It should also be noted that the definition focuses on the ideas of intellectual activity and art. There is no claim to capacity or authority beyond these concepts. An expression is the realization of a work through notation, language, performance, and so on. New performances, arrangements, additions, or translations are new expressions, not new works. Catalogers show some of these changes conventionally in uniform titles and others in a less structured way. 
To call something a new work recognizes the addition of new intellectual or artistic content. A decision has to be made, often based on the work of scholars in collected editions and thematic catalogs. Here are some examples. The list transcription has been assigned its own preferred title as a new work. For the Clementi and Rameau examples, the versions might be considered either new works or new expressions, but the cataloger has not committed himself or herself to individual preferred titles, but has instead relied on unstructured notes to inform the user. The cataloging rules allow for this flexibility. Although one hears RDA criticized by catalogers for being too theoretical, the RDA definition of work is pragmatic in true library tradition. It is not a philosophical exercise or a statement about authenticity or aesthetic value. It is designed to help the user by enabling discovery. How is work level data recorded? The records in bibliographic databases are essentially descriptions of manifestations or sources, either published or unique. They also contain, embedded within their flat file features, uh, structures, information about the work, expression, and sometimes the item or exemplar level. Work level attributes, such as composition, date, variant title, thematic catalog number, medium of performance, and so on, appear in various structured or unstructured forms, depending on factors including the policies of the cataloging agency, the age of the record, and the type of manifestation being described. They are located at different places within the bibliographic record and have rarely been specifically identified as work-related information. Uniform titles, or as RDA calls them, preferred titles, are still used as a structured way of recording work level information. The uniform title is an artificial construction, a left anchored data string, structured by the cataloger according to rules. It should be regarded as a tool for collocation and not some kind of summing up of or academic statement about a work. Although catalogers do, of course, make it as accurate as possible within the constraints, it has certain limitations. For instance, the access point begins with the creator's name, which is not intuitive. Works with multiple creators are identified by the creator first named in the source. Musical works are identified by the composer of the music, rather than by a lyricist or librettist. We are coming closer to the point of no longer needing these constructions. Ideally, the data they contain should be deconstructed into discreetly recorded elements, which can be retrieved, matched, and combined in more sophisticated ways. Records which contain only work level information do exist. The name title records in the authority file of the Name Authority Cooperative Program, NACO, are essentially records for works. These records, unfortunately, are unfamiliar to library users, as most institutions choose not to make them visible through their catalogs. They exist in the background of library systems, enabling the linking and updating of preferred title access points in bibliographic records. They can be viewed free of charge through the Library of Congress Authorities website. In the newer records, there is additional element-based recording, form, key, instrumentation, although the access points themselves are still data strings. Each record also has a URI or permalink, enabling it to operate as linked data. How can work-level data be standardized? In the NACO file, each work has one authorized title with other versions treated as variants. This is not a good model for agencies like RISM, which use different languages. No linguist linguistic string can be a single universal authority. An alternative model is a larger collaborative union authority file, which draws together authorities, linking them and identifying them as the same work. VIAF, Virtual International Authority File, is one example of such a collaborative service it is run by a consortium and hosted by OCLC. Its aim is to match and link authorities which are equivalents in the authority files of different countries. 
As the VF website explains, all descriptions for a given entity are merged into a cluster that brings together the different names for that entity. This service allows researchers to identify names, locations, works, and expressions while preserving regional preferences for language, spelling, and script. Each cluster has a unique number and a URI or permalink. The principal consortium members are the Library of Congress, the Deutsche Nationalbibliothek, and the Bibliothèque Nationale de France and OCLC. Many other contributors have joined them. VF, however, is still a research project of OCLC rather than a product. Another approach would be for an international agency to assign a unique number to each work. A project around a proposed International Standard Authority data number was conducted in 1997, but the idea was finally abandoned in 2008 because it was felt that the cost and complexity of maintaining such a registry would be unsustainable. Barbara Tillett suggested that the clusters of descriptions in the VF file might act as a practical alternative to such a system. There is now an ISWC standard, that's the International Standard Musical Work Identification Code, which is a unique, permanent, and internationally recognized reference number for the identification of musical works. However, this was chiefly designed for rights management purposes for new works. How can work level data be linked? The point of separating data elements is to take advantage of the technical infrastructure of the World Wide Web in order to share information as linked data. Data elements which are identified and stored as things rather than in documents or strings can be individually named using URIs. Every element which is so named and then represented in RDF Resource Description Framework, another international standard, becomes part of a worldwide network of interconnected data. This network makes it possible for users to discover and integrate information from different data sources. For musical works, this could lead the researcher to additions, arrangements, sound recordings of performances, derivative works, and books and articles which have the work as a subject. We are in an era of change and development. No current library management system can actually manipulate bibliographic metadata elements the way we would like, and a successor to the MARC encoding format will be needed. However, recent schemas, standards, and systems are developing in this direction. For example, the IFLA library reference model, records in context for archives, RDA, BibFrame, and RIMF, which is RDA in many metadata formats. The principle of element-based recording can be illustrated by comparing the left-anchored structures of LCSH, Library of Congress subject headings, and the new vocabularies designed to replace them, which can be used in faceted searching. This is more flexible. It uses the power of machine searching to bring together the elements which are relevant to the searcher. How could work-level data be extracted from existing manifestation records? Work-related attributes and relationships are trapped, as we have seen, in bibliographic or manifestation records. This type of information could be extracted and gathered together into a single work record for each work, which would be shared between all expressions and manifestations. This would remove the necessity of repeating information and would act as a link between editions and also as a link to related works and related agents. For this to happen, data transformations will be required. Transformations will need to use data mining, collocation, and identification. A name title record, like a NACO authority record, could become the kernel for a work record. We might first bring different manifestations of the same work together and then use data mining algorithms to find the common work-related elements in those descriptions and cluster these elements together into work records. Certain types of data can be targeted as work-level data because of their specific mark coding, author, subject, genre, medium of performance. However, in legacy records, these and other relevant data often appear in nonspecific areas and will need more sophisticated algorithms to identify and extract them. 
each element identified would then be subject to entification, the process of transforming the textual or numeric data strings, which currently represent entities into machine actionable links. These links lead to a definition of the relevant entity where it resides within an ontology, such as the RD registry or one of the new vocabulary thesauri for a genre or medium of performance. This returns us to linked data principles, well explained by Heath and Bizer in their 2001 book, Linked Data Evolving the Web into a Global Data Space. And I quote, the first linked data principle advocates using URI references to identify not just web documents and digital content, but also real world objects and abstract concepts. These may include tangible things such as people, places, and cars, or those that are more abstract, such as the relationship type of knowing somebody, the set of all green cars in the world, or the color green itself. This principle can be seen as extending the scope of the web from online resources to encompass any object or concept in the world. The second linked data principle advocates the use of HTTP URIs to identify objects and abstract concepts, enabling these URIs to be dereferenced, that is, looked up, over the HTTP protocol into a description of the identified object or concept." End quote. This work of matching strings to things can be started even within legacy MARC data. MARC structure currently allows for the insertion of links URI data in subfield zero into certain fields, including those for names and name titles. In conclusion, this revision of the way we manipulate data may seem complex and even alarming, but it has exciting potential which is well worth the pain of change. I hope it has been demonstrated that machine-readable structured data helps human users by assisting them to navigate to where the rich and useful information is and to have a better visualization and understanding of how sources are related. On behalf of Caroline Shaw, thank you very much.